Here's Brody Brazil. So this is my weekly Giants in Review video, and quite honestly, it's not going to have a lot to do with actual baseball, more to do with the injury situation surrounding San Francisco. And they were already struggling enough to begin with, not performing, not getting the results. I thought on Saturday, when Matt Chapman hit that first inning grand slam for some real instinctual reason, I thought that might be a turning point of the season. Like, this is the starting point. Here we go. This is when things turn around for the better and no looking back. Instead, later in that game, Conforto comes out. And then the very next day, there's Jung Hoo Lee on Sunday, Mother's Day, being carried off the field. He's got that shoulder injury, which we don't yet know the severity of it. As I'm recording this right now, I don't know if it's a matter of several weeks, several months, surgery. I don't really even want to go down that road yet until we hear results of the MRI and get some confirmation. But it, it certainly does not look good for the short-term future of Jung Hoo Lee. Before we dive into the injuries and get to the doom and gloom of all that stuff too much, let's first begin with the big picture, right? Which is a little bit more reassuring. You're 42 games into this season. That's actually 25.9% of 162 games. So let's be honest here. It's not early anymore. We're out of the April phase. We're now in the mid-May phase and we're 25% complete with the baseball season, which is not enough to decide San Francisco's fate. I don't think anybody should sit there and know exactly how this is going to play out one way or the other, but it is a significant portion into the baseball season. 19 and 23 is their record, four and six in their last 10 games. And I mean, last weekend in Philadelphia and even since then, really hard to just gain some traction. The Giants are still only five and 12 against 500 teams. They've been playing a lot of good teams lately, better teams lately. But even in the series where they're the favorites, they just cannot capitalize. They can't win three in a row. They can't generally sweep. They've yet to do that. It's one of my points here. This team, and they've won two in a row right now, but they're about to play the Dodgers starting tonight. Difficult assignment. I'm not saying it's impossible. Difficult game to win. They've yet to have that momentum of even three straight wins this season. They're also sitting right now at a negative 39 run differential which only five MLB teams have a worse run differential. And some of them are up in the 80s, and I think Chicago's up at minus 90. So there is far worse, and there's some teams that are not uh, that much better, minus 37, minus 32. But if you're the Giants, you obviously want to be a little bit more competitive in your losses. They haven't really blown out a bunch of teams yet. Uh, They're never on the right side of of a laugher, it seems like, so far this year. So those are kind of the big-picture trends that you notice with this team. And it is a little bit about offense this year. I mean, they're still hitting two thirty nine as a team. That's their batting average. But when you look at it, that's only one point below the MLB median average. So it's not terrible. It's just not timely this season. They're not getting it consistently enough at the right times or, quite honestly, from the players you would come to expect the offense from. Okay. So even with all of that, and you were thinking, all right, the challenge of themselves is enough to try and turn the corner and get away from these struggles and get back to a winning record and be five over 500 instead of four or five under 500. Jung Hoo Lee has a dislocated left shoulder that's different from a separated left shoulder. The dislocated left shoulder, we're going to figure out what exactly is the situation surrounding him coming up pretty soon. Generally speaking, a separated shoulder is a much quicker recovery. It doesn't necessarily require surgery, but in this case, and there was some confusion, this is a dislocated left shoulder for Jung Hoo Lee. So again, we don't know the status of this this yet. We don't know the timeline of this yet, but certainly it's not good for him to miss any time considering he's been the Giants, one of their most consistent hitters so far this year, putting the ball in play and getting on base. And man, when he crashed into that center field fence out there, For the second time, right, Slater went into the fence, suffered a concussion, that cyclone fence where the new bullpens are, just so frustrating to have two injuries basically back-to-back on the same same homestand just like that. So Jung-Hoo Lee, we don't know the status. Maybe the Giants' best hitter so far. Michael Conforto has a right hamstring strain. He had to come out of the game on Saturday. And when I talk about hamstring injuries, you know, I've been mentioning them for years as a sports broadcaster, but until I actually had one, To understand what it feels like when it pops or it's not right or it feels a little wobbly or wonky, hard to do anything, quite honestly. And the hamstring is an injury kind of like some of the upper body uh, oblique and core injuries up here. It's a matter of hard hard to really actually get through them and hard to get rid of them, hard to get past them. 
The hamstring injury is one that lingers, so we certainly hope for Conforto that it's not a big deal, it doesn't take a long time, and that he can actually move past that type of ailment. Slater into the wall, it's a concussion, and in a sense, right, like a concussion, a head injury, a brain injury, it's the swelling of your brain. Nobody wants to ever see that. That's not good for a human being. However, in terms of the recovery process, generally speaking, it's a little bit more understandable. We, we know what the injury was. We know that giving it time, giving him time off should generally do the trick. Uh, but again, once a p person or player has multiple concussions, I mean, we see this in hockey all the time, it just complicates the matter. So you don't want to see it again. If it's a one-off, obviously that's best for Slater, best for the team. Tom Murphy dealing with a grade one or two left knee sprain. Again, don't know the status or necessarily severity of that, but that's one of your one-two punch as a backstop for this team. Jorge Soler struggling this year. Now we're figuring out he's had right shoulder soreness as part of his journey. So don't know what that means. Don't know how long that's actually going to be. Is it something that lingers? Think about the shoulder on a swing, right? It makes a big difference. I'm not, I'm not saying I wish he had a knee injury or an ankle injury, but a shoulder for a heavy swinger is not a good thing. Nick Ahmed has a sprained left wrist, and then Patrick Bailey recently had a concussion and now has an illness or had one over the weekend. So it, this is, what, seven Giants players basically in the last seven, eight days that have all had to come out of games or go on the IL or have their status be unknown. Nick Ahmed's important. That's your shortstop. That's actually also been one of your more uh, contributing offensive players so far this year. So these are not just names on a roster. This is very difficult on the roster because they're all position players. Again, knock on wood, I'm also not wishing for any pitchers to get hurt because I understand the the nature of, of hand and, and arm and elbow injuries for pitchers in Major League Baseball these days. But it's been hard that all the injuries have fallen on this position player group, and now they've got to make some decisions. Now, on the flip side of all of this, there was some good news over the weekend with Blake Snell. He pitched in his first rehab assignment, coming back from the groin injury of a couple weeks ago, one that he's experienced before. He threw an immaculate first inning for San Jose, the San Jose Giants of single-A baseball, against the Stockton Ports. Seven strikeouts total in four perfect innings, 46 total pitches thrown. So he dominated his way through, I understand, a single-A minor league game. But he threw the immaculate first inning. Nine pitches, three strikeouts. He's never done that in his career before. And I think it only happened twice across all of Major League Baseball last season. He told Susan Slusser afterwards, after this rehab outing, that he might need one more rehab start with the Sacramento River Cats of AAA next week. And that would make sense, right, to ramp himself up. And just, just seeing and saying, right, how his season started, maybe this is all for the best. To actually get some rehab assignments, to get some proper ramp up, Back into the season, I think the expectations and the need for Blake Snell are both super high right now. So hopefully this is the course he needs to do what Blake Snell is supposed to do out there. Here are my takeaways. Number one, injuries with any team in any sport, they always create opportunities downwind. It's just that when you're forced to bring up players before you really wanted to, whether it's Matos or Ramos or Luciano soon, it's just, it's one of those situations where you're not really feeling as eager or as excited about it because this is out of necessity rather than a choice the team made because somebody was definitely ready and they're going to give them a soft landing. So these moves, yes, they do create opportunity. And yes, there are some players in the pipeline who probably are ready and deserve it to some certain degree, but it's not, it's just never going to feel right because of the timing and the situation at hand. This franchise, obviously, again, I'm just making big picture points here with their record and the way things have been going. And there have been some bright spots in the rotation, some bright spots in the bullpen here and there. Uh, but this team didn't necessarily need a shakeup. They were already kind of walking on unsteady ground with their record and not having any traction this year. And now they have to survive this shakeup of this last week of injuries and what it means for the team moving forward and the difficult stretch that they are about to endure. Because to me, right here, right now, and I said, hey, get out of April with a 500 record. They didn't do that. They were close, I think two under, but they didn't get to 500 by the end of April. Now, this month of May becomes super critical ground for the Giants. And I'm not here to say that they can get themselves or eliminate themselves from a playoff spot here in the month of May. 
but you can make it really difficult for the rest of this season if the Giants struggle for the next couple weeks. And speaking of the next couple weeks, this is how I'll end it. Look at their schedule ahead. Three starting tonight against the Dodgers. Those are at home. Dodgers 27 and 15, first in the NL West. Then you get three more against the Rockies. But I mean, the last time that they were up in Denver, they didn't really dominate that series as they could have, should have, or were expected to do. The Rockies are 12 and 28. They are fifth in the NL West. Then you get Pittsburgh, kind of a, I say middle of the road team. They're five under 500 right now, third in the NL Central. Then you also get the Mets, 19 and 20. So at a 500 record, they are third in the NL East. And then you get the Phillies, right? So a 28 and 13 team. We saw the sweep of, was that last weekend now? Four games out there in Philadelphia. And then you get you get the Yankees back home on that same homestand too. They are second in the AL East, 27 and 15. My point is first place team, fifth, third, third, and then second and first. A little bit of a mixed bag, but it's not like you're playing only third and fourth place teams here with relation to the standings. You're playing against some good baseball teams. So not only are you... Beat up, banged up, bruised up, but you're going up against some of the best, better teams, I should say, on the schedule in the near future. So things were tough. I think things are getting even tougher for San Francisco. And it's not to paint uh, pessimism here or that uh, this season won't be worth it in the end. You don't know that yet. But this month is going to help define their season more so than a, a typical May generally would. That's my perspective on it. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I really appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That'll greatly help me in this video and this channel. And by the way, if you've never seen me or this channel before, that's actually a good thing. I'll take it. I'm glad you're here. Glad you found me. But make sure you come back. And the best way to do that is to go down there and hit that subscribe button so I can definitely see you back here next time.